CC Vector Blur is found under the Blur and Sharpen category, and I'll actually make a new adjustment layer, we'll call this Blur, and apply the effect to it. Now this blur is a little bit different than basically any other blur in After Effects because it bases the blur and the direction of the blur on a vector map. And when you see the word vector, you're probably thinking of something like this Illustrator file of my logo where I could turn on continuously rasterize and scale it up infinitely without losing any quality. But that's not the meaning of vector in this sense. CC Vector Blur is referring to vector in the way that it's used in math where it's describing a direction and a velocity, basically, between two points. So if I go to the amount slider and just turn it up, I'm gonna get a very weird looking blur because it's basing the blur on what it's actually applied to. The vector map is what's actually underneath it. But we can control this a lot more precisely if we define our own vector map. So let me reset that and I'll make a new solid layer and we'll call this blur map, click OK, and then just add a gradient ramp to this layer and I'll reposition these two points so that we see the pure black and pure white edges. I'll turn that layer off for now, we don't need to see it, and then choose that layer as my vector map. And I also need to make sure that I choose effects and masks so that it's looking at that gradient ramp that we applied to the layer. Now if I turn up the amount, that blur is only going to exist between those two points of that gradient. So if I select that effect so I can see the two points and turn that layer off, I can move this around to shape this blur however I want. And as I rotate these two points around, you can see that the blur is orienting itself to that direction as well. So the vector is the angle between these two points. And everything beyond those two points is not blurred because there is no change in colors on these pixels beyond those two points. The blur depends on a change in value between pixels in order to generate the blur. So even if I were to raise up this black color to a different shade of gray, it's not going to blur out anything over here because this is still that solid color area. Instead, it's just making that blur less intense because the change in values between those two points isn't as great. So at its most basic, that's how vector blur works. But we can do a lot more with this. So if I go into the blur and take a look at the next option, we have angle offset. So if I change this angle, you can see that this is actually rotating the blur direction. So it doesn't have to be aligned with that vector map, it can just be based on it. But if I changed it to 90 degrees, then it's gonna be perpendicular to the direction of those two points. Okay, let me change that back down to zero. Next up is ridge smoothness. And this is basically like a fall off between the blurred and non-blurred area. So if we look right here where this grid is kind of gradually getting into the unaffected version, and I turn that smoothness up, you can see how the fall off becomes greater. It takes more time to transition from the blurred area to the non-blurred area. Or if I turn it way down, then it's a very harsh transition between the blurred and unblurred area. And this value actually changes depending on what type of blur we're using up here. If we use natural, constant length, or perpendicular, it will stay on ridge smoothness. So let's take a look at the other options. Constant length is actually the same as natural, but instead of fading between the blurred and non-blurred areas, it has a straight blur length. So you can see as I adjust that ridge smoothness, there's really no curve to this fall off. If I turn it back to natural, it's basically like an ease for that blur fall off. Next up is perpendicular, and this is again the same as natural, but the vectors are going perpendicular rather than aligned to that vector map. So if we set this to perpendicular and then rotate it at 90 degrees, it's going to look very similar to natural. I'll undo that, and then the next two options are direction center and direction fading. And if I choose one of those, ridge smoothness becomes revolutions. So let me reset this back down to its default and turn the amount down a little bit so we can see what exactly is happening here. With direction center as our type, the blur is now extending beyond those gradient points. We can see the blur applied to the entire image. The center part of the name means that it's finding the center point of that vector map, so right between the two gradient ramp points and blurring in opposite directions from that center outwards. So I could turn that up and down. I can also change the angle offset, but the revolutions value is actually like a cycle. So I could have repetitions of that blur within that vector map. So if I change revolutions to two, then we're gonna see that blur doubled up. Or if I go down to 0.5, then we'll only see half as much. I'll set that back to one and then look at direction fading. And this is very similar to direction center, except it's only blurring in one direction. Again, aligned to that vector map. 
but I can still use those revolutions to repeat that over and over again if I want. All right, let's reset this and set our blur map back to that gradient, turn up the amount a little bit, and then look at the property value. This is the channel that the vector map is basing its blur on. So by default, it's set to lightness, but I could change it to just the green channel or just the blue channel if I wanted to. My vector map is grayscale, so there's no change in value between those color channels. But if I were to change one of these gradient colors to something completely different and the other one to an opposite color, that will now affect my blur because I'm basing it on the blue channel only and now there's not much blue information in my gradient. All right, let me undo that back to where we were. And the last property in the list is map softness. So I'll set this back to lightness, zoom in so we can see this fall off a little bit better, and then just modify this map softness so you can see how it is affecting the actual blur. All right, so those are all the different controls for vector blur. Now let's play with our blur map a little bit to make something a little bit more interesting. So I'm gonna get rid of that gradient ramp and add a fractal noise and change the fractal type to strings. Maybe give it a little bit more contrast so that we just have these thinner lines. Maybe turn down the brightness a little bit and then scale it all up a bit. I'll hide that layer and now my vector blur looks completely different. So let's turn that amount way down and reset that map softness down to its default and zoom in here so we can see what's happening. So if I turn this on and back off, you can see the blur is aligned to these lines now. Probably want to increase the ridge smoothness just a little bit to make that a little less pixelated. And I can even change the angle offset to get something that looks very unique. From here, I could say animate the fractal noise. So I could go to the beginning, set a keyframe on evolution and go forward about three seconds and then just advance this forward. And now I have this animated vector blur on top of my comp. And maybe I want to make that even a little bit more detailed. Let's duplicate the fractal noise, collapse the first one and reset the second one and change the blend mode to say screen. Let's change the fractal type to rocky, increase the contrast a little bit and maybe make it a little bit larger as well as increase the complexity. Play this back so we can see what it looks like before the blur and then turn that blur map off and play it back all together. From here, I could even go into the CC vector blur and maybe animate the angle offset as well. So I'll just crank that up so that that's animated at the same time. And now I have this very unique look over top of my entire comp. There's no one way to use CC vector blur. There's lots of different applications. It's a very unique blur and the possibilities for it are basically endless since you can create any type of custom vector map to base the blur on. It's one of those effects that you need to start just testing out and seeing what you can create with it. But that's CC Vector Blur in a nutshell. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you want to support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.